My name is Bernadette Van Goelen. I'm with the Saskatchewan Perennial Society. I joined the society in 2001, but this garden was uh, thought about way before that. In 1991, our president, uh, Robin Smith, uh, thought about the idea for the garden and made some sketches, but he couldn't see his dream through because he passed away at the early age of 42. And uh, so his dream kind of died with him a little bit, but uh, the Perennial Society persevered and we asked Graceberg to do a design for the meditation garden, which was a contemplative place, a place to relax. There's some benches there to sit down and enjoy the garden. The other thing we did when we designed the garden was uh, we made sure that there was something blooming at all times. You can come to this garden in early spring and there will be fritillaria and tulips blooming. A little bit later you have the peonies and then a little bit later you'll have the asters. So even though there's not always a lot of color in the garden, there's something blooming or something of interest at all times. So the meditation garden is actually in the spot where the foreman's house of the forestry farm used to be. And that uh, building got torn down and so there was this empty spot right here that uh, Robin Smith had thought of as developing as a garden. The one thing that we had to do, do was to keep the edges of the garden intact because uh, it, it, you were surrounded by edges that were planted in 1913 when the, when the foreman's house was built. So on this side we have caragana, on the side over there we have lilacs, and these are all the original hedges that you know, encircled the house and garden at the time. We had a very extensive hot what I call a hot garden bed, which got a lot of sun. And that bed is right here. And a lot of the perennials in this bed are, they may not be the same, but they, they were the same uh, species that were planted originally. We had asters in there. We had some daylilies in there. And uh, some of the stuff was a little bit invasive. So we started pulling it out. But the idea is to have some blooms all the time and to keep, keep the ones that are invasive in check and let the other ones bloom. Uh, we try to actually label everything so that people walking through the garden could actually go home and replicate the garden if they wanted to do so. In 1996, the first, uh, the pond was uh, dug uh, at the entrance of the garden and we designed a dry riverbed to go, to go and to, uh, to stop and go into the pond. So on very wet years, uh, there might be water standing in here. And um, so that was part of the design of the garden. The other thing that uh, we did was we put a trellis in the front of the garden and when we developed the Heritage Rose Garden we repeated that trellis to have continuation of the garden. Now this garden was a contemplative garden but the Rose Garden was uh, designed to showcase roses that were developed on the prairies or in Canada for our coldness zones. So when the Rose Garden was designed, again, it was designed by Graysburg in 2003, and it was supposed to showcase roses and plant material that was developed on the prairies for the prairies. It also includes some roses uh, from the Explorer series that were developed in Quebec and Ontario. Uh, to get continuation through the garden, we repeated the trellis here. Also, the rose garden or the meditation garden has a crab apple in it, and we have the same crab apples featured on this side in the rose garden and other crab apples around to, to kind of unify both the gardens. The other thing we have done is we've worked with the uh, art placement committee and uh, got some sculptures donated 
And so when you walk through the gardens, there's two or three sculptures that you can look at to give a little bit of interest. Oh, since we're talking about, uh, we're talking for the Saskatoon Horticultural Society, they used to have a garden uh, next to the Mendel Art Gallery. And when they dismantled that garden, we inherited uh, this Japanese uh, statue. And this was on top of that, but I thought uh, when we installed it, we opted to put these on the ground because we, there's no supervision here. And so we didn't want it to be to toppled and broken. So that's why we actually have them on two sides of this pathway. The rose I'm standing beside is actually a rose that was not developed on the prairies and not developed in Canada at all. It's a German rose and it's actually called the, a pavement rose. And the reason I've planted it here is because it really always does well. And the other reason is it has a very distinctive smell. And a lot of the hardy roses that were developed here do not have a scent. And having this rose here gives, often gives the gar a whole garden a scent of roses, even though it's only this one that really has a distinctive smell that really spreads widely. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, you can come and see these gardens at the Forestry Farm Park and Zoo. It's the Robin Smith Meditation Garden and the Heritage Rose Garden. Thank you.